Now, back in the day when I was just a young kid, we used to gather up in the old family suburban and we'd go hit the wide open desert in southern New Mexico looking for random dirt roads just to see what we could find. Now back then, we referred to that kind of thing as boonie busting. Now if we fast forward 30 some odd years, here on Living the Van Life, not much has changed. Because that's been the mission of going out and exploring the path less traveled. Today, the term is overlanding. Now, what exactly is overlanding? Is it out driving random dirt roads? Does overlanding have to be forging rivers with water in your doors and over your hood? If you take a paved highway, are you then not overlanding? Or can overlanding be as simple as exploring the path less traveled? I guess if anybody were to ask me to describe overlanding, I would describe overlanding as traveling overland in a self-reliant vehicle prepared for anything that comes my way. Whether it's terrain, weather, mechanical breakdown, or just pure survival. Being prepared is the key factor in overlanding when it comes to facing any given challenge you may find along your journey. And that has been one of the great lessons that I have learned from van life. Having lived full time in my van for many years, I've learned a thing or two of what it means to be self-reliant in a vehicle and being prepared. So when it came time to start exploring more backcountry and discovering what overlanding is, I felt like I was already halfway there. Digging deeper within myself, I'd say that overlanding is about the adventure of exploration. Now, exploration doesn't have to mean that you're going where no man has ever gone before. Rather, it can be as simple as going to a place you, yourself, have never been. So I woke up this morning in Oroville, Washington, and I decided that I'd like to find the northernmost route through the dirt roads of north central Washington. This trek is going to take us up through the Okanagan National Forest. The challenge is going to be to see if we can get through all the snow and all the downed trees because it's still early in the season. But in the ideal situation, we find ourselves some 50 miles through the backcountry of north central Washington. Let's see what we can get ourselves into.
Man, I think one of my favorite parts about being out here in the woods is the smell of the forest and the aroma of the wood and just how fresh it is. It's one of those types of smells that you just wish you could actually bring home with you, bottle it up and just carry it everywhere you go. Actually, I came across this air freshener in this brand here, Drift. Drift is a natural air care subscription service. They've combined functional, minimal design with fresh scents to create an air freshener that stands out while blending in. In fact, they're actually the sponsor of today's video. This little metal clip actually clips right on up here onto your visor. And then this is the actual air freshener. This thing just clips right onto that little metal piece that is hanging from your visor. It's not cheesy and dangly from your mirror. It just blends in nicely, especially here inside the new Sprinter. Now, how does an air care subscription service work? First off, choose your style. Next up, you choose your scent. You can choose your own scent or you can pick the popular scent of the month. Pick how often you want your new refills delivered to your doorstep. One of the great things about Drift as well is that it's free shipping always on every order. Now the scent that I got for my first time around is teak, which combines musk, amber, pepper, teak, and cedar. It's literally that smell of the woods, the forest, and the aroma that comes along with it by visiting www.drift.co forward slash van life or clicking the link in the description down below and using code van life, new customers can get 60% off a wood visor starter kit and room spray set plus free shipping. That's just $8 for a $20 valued set. And with that being said, we're gonna jump back into it and see if we can't make our way through the snow, past the trees, on our way to the other side. Well, right now I am at about 4,200 feet of elevation and I think that's about peak for this route that I have selected for where I'm headed. I hope so because the snow is already fairly deep and I don't want it getting any deeper or any worse. The crazy thing is that I am only a few hundred meters from the Canadian border off to my left here. In fact, I could practically throw a rock into Canada from where I'm at. That's how far north and that's how remote we are right now. Getting out here on these back roads and into the path less traveled, it's where you begin to turn back time. The further out you get away from modern society and the rat race of the city, the less modern things are out here. And the less things are touched, 
by the ever-changing fast-paced lives we live in today. Out here, it's a chance to slow down for a moment, to stop and think what life must have been like back then for these folks who traveled out here and chose to set up life here way out in the middle of nowhere. And that's when I begin to find perspective. When I think that life is tough at the moment or I find myself in a lull trying to find the next breath of inspiration or motivation, it's out here on these back roads that truly grounds me and it makes me realize that I need to truly be more thankful for the things that I do have in my life. fallen trees didn't stop us the late spring snow didn't hold us back after 50 some miles of backcountry remote roads that skimmed along the canadian border i've made it back down to the highway at this point i've got a short jaunt over to lake curlew in north central washington where i'm going to set up camp build a fire and cook a meal for the evening
when it comes down to it, overlanding is about getting yourself out into the backcountry, away from the rat race of day-to-day -day life, and exploring the path less traveled. But most importantly, opening yourself up to your surroundings, the environment, the wilderness, the fresh air, and getting back to a slower pace of what life used to be like in times past. Overlanding can be an experience that opens your soul, allows you to search within, and figure out where you're going next. After all, it's not just exploring out here in the backcountry, it's also exploring within yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Living the Van Life Adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.